Hi, Lee Ellis here with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. You know, we're getting into the summer soon, and it's a really good time to get outdoors and enjoy sports and the beaches and all those sort of things. But it's also a good time to start reading and for me to catch up on some reading. So I look forward to summertime downtime, not only for golf and maybe going to the beach and that sort of thing, but for reading. You know, I get a lot of joy out of reading. In fact, I read almost every night for 20, 30 minutes and sometimes in the mornings for that much or more. I read because I learn, I get inspired. It keeps me connected with the, the real world, a broader world than the one I'm living in. But what really caught my eye about this month and made me want to talk about it was an article recently about General Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary Mattis, and what an avid reader he is. And that when he retired from the military, the Marine Corps, a few years ago, he had a library of 7,000 books. Now that's a lot of books, a lot of reading. But you know, I found that a lot of really good senior leaders are readers. In fact, it's almost uh, a good catchy phrase, leaders are readers. Now, why do they do that? Well, one, in the military we are taught, at some point in our career, we're taught about professional reading. It depends on who you are and where you are, but I was late picking up on that, to be honest with you, and I'll come back to that a little bit later. But General Mattis' article, the one published about him and his reading, just really caught my attention because I had just read a book by another four-star general who's kind of a peer of General Mattis, and that was General Butch Neal. General Neal and I are contemporaries also. We were in Vietnam together the same year, 1967, and he was there with a, a friend of mine. Both were lieutenants there leading platoons in the Marine Corps when I was flying combat over North Vietnam and South Vietnam, actually flying some close air support for those Marines up there. But when I read General Neal's book, I was really inspired. Uh, I felt like I connected with him. I understood his worldview. I understood, even though he was a Marine infantry guy that, and me a fighter pilot, that our worldviews about leadership were similar. I admired him for his humility and his strength. You know, we talk about that a lot in Leading with Honor, is having both confidence and humility. And I think he had both. For one thing, he had learned to really take care of his people and he loved spending time with the Marines, the young Marines, uh, out in the field. And I really appreciate that because that's the kind of leadership they need. So, as I read General Neal's book, it reminded me again of how inspiring and uh, informative reading can be. Because I was inspired, but I was also informed. He reminded me of some principles that I wanted to kind of renew in my own life. So that was a, a recent book, and I've read three more in the last six weeks uh, that really inspired and helped me also. One of them was written by a friend of mine who lives in Colorado Springs. His house and everything in it was burned up uh, in 2013 fire out there in the Black Forest. His book is called Nomad Fire. And it talks about his life and his hiking on the Appalachian Trail, but eventually it gets to the fire and they lost everything. And that helped me deal with stuff, which I'm dealing with right now in my own life. Another book I read recently was by a good friend, Greg Hebert, who was a leadership consultant for the last 20 years, primarily in healthcare. And it's uh, seven lessons for becoming happier in your life, not being so stressed out and actually changing and ref maybe, um, changing your mindset about yourself that could help you be happier. I thought it was a very helpful book, a very needed book in our culture today, and it helped me to look at ways that I could be happier and have a more positive attitude in facing the challenges of the day. And the third book is Into the Mouth of the Cat, a book written in the 80s, a book that I had a, a role with the author in sharing information about the person featured in the book, First Lieutenant Lance Sijun. He's the only uh, Air Force Academy uh, graduate to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Lance and I were buddies, and uh, it's a story of his survival and fight to survive in the jungles of Laos after being shot down two days after me in the jungles over there in the, the war in Vietnam. It's very inspiring, very difficult, but Lance's 
uh, courage in dealing with difficult situations inspired me in some of the situations I'm facing now. And I realize I really have it pretty good. And I thought, you know, if he could do that, I can sure handle it today. So through stories, we become inspired, we become informed. It's one of the cheapest ways to learn about life and leadership because you learn from other people's stories. So if you're not an avid reader, I understand that. I was not an avid reader until I was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. And when I was in the Air War College, we had time set aside every afternoon to read. And we would read and reflect and make some notes and share those notes about what we'd read and discuss it in class the next day. Through that process, I became uh, an avid reader. I found it. I was learning. I was uh, broadening my horizons. I was inspired. It was just where I wanted to be. So since then, I've been a pretty avid reader. But maybe you're not there yet. And so I want to encourage you this summer to get a book. Find a book that has uh, subject matter that you're really interested in. It could be tennis. It could be cars. Uh, it could be anything that you're interested in. Maybe a biography, an autobiography, where there's going to be life lessons, or stories that can come to life for you. And you can learn about the stuff you're interested in, but you can also learn about the leadership and life lessons out of those stories. These stories uh, not only inform us, but they inspire us. They give us uh, an emotional connection to that story. The emotions are very strong in helping us change our behavior. That's why we change our behavior, some emotional deep need to do that. So think about that. So jump in, pick a book, get started. Make sure that you come out with about two things that you can retain and use from that book. Write them down. Okay, here are two things I'm going to remember, I'm going to use, or I'm going to manage my own behavior differently. I'm going to respond differently. Lessons I learned out of that book. And three is share that with someone else. Pass that book along to someone else. Encourage them to read. Share what you learned from that book with your family, with your teammates at work, and make it a point of discussion. When you do that, the book comes alive in your life, and then you're ready for the next book because that was such a good experience. And I think you'll see that reading becomes a real, not a passive pastime. It may seem that way in the moment. It can be very relaxing, but it also becomes active as the principles and stories in that book come alive in your own life.